Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you a 40k painting tutorial, this time on the new 40k Orc uh, Kill Rig miniature. So the uh, large war machine made for the uh, the new Beast Snagger range of Orcs. Um, this thing is an absolutely monstrous beast of a thing. I absolutely love paint, uh, building and painting it, and I cannot wait to see what it does on the battlefield. Um, today's tutorial is going to be slightly different because all I'm showing you in this video is how to paint the body of it. So all of the mechanical parts, all of the harpoons and cannons and stuff. Um, I painted the squig on the front, exactly the same as the squig video, so I'm going to throw a link up here. Um, so follow that video to show you how to paint the squig and the five crew miniatures on the shaman character on the back. Um, they were painted using uh, my infantry, my Beast Naga infantry tutorial, which I will also throw a link up right here. Um, so if you follow those two videos on how to paint the squig on the front and the crew on the back, and then this video here um, to paint the main body of it, put all those bits and pieces together, and you're going to have yourself a fantastic miniature. Um, I really hope you guys like the video. Um, stick around to the end and see if we pulled it off. Okay. And this is the main body of the miniature, the bit we're going to be focusing on in today's video. As you can see, I've primed the entire miniature with straight up Chaos Black Spray, um, and we'll be working it up from here. The little bits that I'm indicating here, these little wire straps, if I could go back in time, I may remove them for uh, or not glue them on until later on in the video. Um, they are quite fragile, and I did manage to get to the end of the video without breaking them, but I did put stress on them a few times by mistake, so that may be a thought for you guys. Um, I've glued the guns to 40mm uh, bases and then have them on painting stands just to make it easier for me to get paint on them. But yeah, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do to give it that ramshackled look is give it a base coat of lead belcher. The way I'm going to apply this lead belcher is not in a solid coat and it's not quite in a dry brush. It's somewhere in between. I believe the technical term for it is called an overbrush. Um, so we're going to go quite heavy with the silver, looking to give like 95% coverage. But all those rivets and all those little dents and even like the, the inside circumference of all the circles that are there on the top deck, we do not need to get them with the silver. Um, and we'll just leave a little bit of black in the recesses um, and add a little bit of depth to the miniature. I'm using a dry brush to apply this paint. I'm just going to take my time. This is this is a definitely one of those. Uh, it's hard to know where all the different parts of this miniature are. So just take your time, pick a part. So for instance, I've started with this top deck and I'm going to go along and start from here and work my way around. I've gotten all the handles done, the railings done. I'm going to flip it over and get all the bits that are going to be exposed. And I'm going to literally work my way down the steps to the next one. Continue that down the steps again, main part, left side, right side, and then the, the tower part. So here it is with the guns. You can see it is mostly black, but things like those chains there, you can definitely see the black shining through, all the little gaps, black shining through, and the main body. This is the level of silver that will be required. I've left all the panels black because they're gonna be a different color. This part here uh, is the ones we're gonna be focusing on with that accent color. It took me a while to pick the color. In the end, I did decide on the same white because um, it's such a neutral color and it'll uh, tie into my army quite well. Now for the battered white, it's not an easy process getting this from black, but uh, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to do it. So I'm going to use the base coat gray sear. And this isn't going to go on with amazing coverage. Um, and that's okay. We, we don't need it to go on with amazing coverage. I am literally just going to put on a, a base coat onto all of the paneled parts. There will be a lot of black showing through and I'm, I'm not even going to go back in with a second thin coat to cover it up. It's all going to get layered up later on and, and cover up any of those bits where the black is shining through. Um, and I think it just adds once again to that ramshackled aesthetic that orcs uh, are known for. If this was a, a space marine tank, you better believe you want to get your clean lines and flat panels, but not required with orcs. Um, so I'm going to cut away here. It's going to take a, a little while to get that done. So, Okay, now here's all the parts with the, the white done. You can see there what I mean by the uh, streakiness um, with the white. That is totally fine. We do not need to worry about that right now. We will come to it later on and you will see uh, what I'm going to do. I'm going to be using the fist on red. I'm going to do all of the jagged teeth um, on all the paneling. Once again, I didn't choose this color. Uh, this was actually the box art was the same as this. So I just copied them. If you have a particularly uh, a particular color scheme for your army, um, your complementary color, you could throw it on this teeth, no problem. Let's 
take my time and hit all these teeth with this red. As you can see, it goes on quite bright. Don't worry, later on we're gonna darken that down and bash it up. Okay, here's the body of it with all those bits done. At this point, I was starting to doubt myself. It seemed kind of ridiculous at this stage, like a clown car, like a cheap toy, but soldier on. It's one of the main things people do is they doubt their paint schemes halfway through, they give up, they stop. 99% of the time, if you follow through, through with a paint scheme, you're going to be more than happy with the results. Okay, now on to the most tedious part of this paint job, and that is picking out all the different parts of it that you want to be brass. Um, you gotta break up all that metallic somehow. So I spent a good, say, 40, 50 minutes with Balthazar Gold, picking out all the different parts I thought would help break up all of that silver. So all pipe work, nuts and bolts, all those kind of bits and pieces. And um, it was, it was a case of literally picking apart, having a look at the bits that were sticking out and picking a few bits of those to then knock out in the Balthazar gold. There's no method to the madness. And this is what I ended up with. You can see all the pipes, uh, the uh, part of the panels the guys walk on, that was a late addition. But as you can see, it breaks up all that silver quite nicely. There's the guns. They were far too silver before. And of course, the traditional silver for brass colored bullets. Okay, now the Serum Sepia. I had to think about this before applying it. Um, obviously, this is quite a, a muddy yellow color. Um, but in the end, I decided to follow my gut, like I always do. I always prefer Serum Sepia to most other colors. Uh, most of the shades. So this is literally going to be an all over shade with Seraphim Sepia. If you doubt me now, just wait till the end. Hold your opinions, your judgments and your your scandalous reviews for my channel till uh, you see the final result and let me know what you think. So far, do you still think I'm running the model? I kind of do too. But I've seen what it looks like at the end, so I think it pays off. Okay, now this is the entire body of the miniature, uh, fully shaded. Looks kind of messy right now, but this is where we actually start the painting process. It's gonna jump over to Wraithbone base coat. And we are going to uh, layer up the white bits, bone bits, cream bits, whatever color you think they are. Um, the technique we're going to be using is kind of like a heavy feather, just like this. We're trying to give maximum coverage as well, or most of the coverage. Um, you want to leave some of the, uh, the dark color in between. Like I said, we're trying to leave some streaks. We want it to look like orc paneling, not, you know, white scars tank or whatever. Just like this. Take your time. It will be worth it in the end. Something like that. And this will be the result when you've done it to the entire miniature. See the color finally starting to pop. See the different parts of the white paneling you should be doing. Now we're on to the lead belcher, and for this we're going to be doing a dry brush on all of the metallics and all of the white and red paneling. Uh, this is another one of those um, kind of sneaky tips and tricks. I use the same thing for my Gene Stealer cult. These are vehicles that are kind of flying around the place, um, definitely not following you know the road or rules. So they're bashed and chipped and they're built by work, so they work, but not very well. So when you get to the white bits, do a little dry brush on all them as well. Catch all those edges, all those uh, beaten metal parts that would have been scraped or scratched going along. As you can see, I'm being a little bit careful not to go overboard. But just add that little fleck of color, little fleck of metallics that you want. Uh, on the front. Sorry, this model's quite tall, it was hard to keep you in frame there. But on that front bit, that big 
kind of scoop bit at the top. Um, I did a little bit of stippling with this silver as well. I stabbed at it a little bit just to put a few patches of silver on it. And uh, yeah, really give it that ramshackle feel. This is what it's looked like when I've done it to the entire part. Let's see the difference already. Look at the back skull plate thing. It looks great. Entire model the whole way through. Definitely feels more orky. I got to this point and I was like, okay, this scheme is going to work. I, I think this is going to look really cool when it's all done. Jump over to a bit of Black Templar. Best color in the world for painting wheels. So go over with uh, Black Templar and just one coat over all the wheels. It's going to be neat and tidy. The reason this paint is always sold out. Okay, now I've put the squig underneath it and glue the miniature to the base. The squig, like I said at the start of this video, um, there is a link in the description on how to get to the video that will show you how to paint that squig skin. All the panels on the squig are painted exactly like everything you've else you've seen in this miniature today. And there he is, happy little rhino squig. He's adorable. Really starting to come together now as a, a solid piece. And then here are the boys. Um, they were done using the How to Paint Beast Naga Infantry video. Very quick, very easy, um, but effective. And then there's the character. Put a little bit more effort into him, but all the same techniques you've seen in any of the three videos we've watched. Um, getting you to this point, you will know exactly how to paint him. And the two big guns. And now comes the, uh, the fun part where I actually get to finally put the entire miniature together as one thing. Um, and finally see it all together. I'm very excited for this. It is just a beast of a thing. I've never seen anything like this in 40k before. I hope the uh, range of miniatures is, is popular. People buy them um, so the guys in Games Workshop make some more miniatures matching in with these guys. I would love to see the range expanded even more. Here is the completed kill wagon. It's just as mental as you'd expect it to be. An absolutely beast looking thing on the table. And there we have it guys. We've managed to get the kill rig fully built, fully painted and fully put back together. I hope you know it's made clear how uh, watching the three videos will give you all the information required to put this model uh, together and get it fully painted. I really do hope you enjoyed this video and the other two accompanying videos. Um, you guys found it useful and are more than comfortable to go out and grab your own kill rig and get it fully painted and get it on the tabletop. If that's the case, if you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed what we did here, um, think about subscribing to the channel. Make sure you like the video and ask me any questions you like below in the comments and I will do my very best to come back to you and answer them. Um, so until the next video, bye. Always remember, the plan is simple. We paint them all.